For this part of the lesson, I'm going to use uh, the TI-84 that is uh, illustrated on your screen. Um, so I can make the drive the point. So I'm going to do it real quickly. Uh, we notice that we have f of x minus k. That means it goes down. So here is my x squared minus 6. And I'm always going to go back and I'm going to reference my parent function. So I want you to see both of them. And I don't think that was a good example, but this one here is a parent function. And here is the uh, new function, which is shifted down. So let me go ahead and make this one. Let me make this one my uh, parent function. And this one here will be the new function, which is going to have the transformation. So now I'm going to add three. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show... I'm going to show you, and, and you can you can use you can do this too. That's going to show you how it looks like when it's being graphed. So I'm going to it's kind of trying to drive a point here. So here is my function, and then here is my transformation. You notice that it goes up. So the plus means it goes up. So now what I'm going to do is. I'm going to add a negative right in front of it, and you're going to see what's going to happen. Uh, maybe you can kind of tell me, predict what's going to happen. So we have a negative x squared, and like I said, like I did last time, I'm going to go ahead and use this feature here to graph it. So you notice it does a reflection over the x-axis, right? So let's kind of predict what do you think is going to happen when the negative is inside the parentheses? That's the question. What happens if the negative is inside the parentheses? So kind of think about what could happen. So I'm going to go ahead and graph it. That's correct. It's a reflection over the y-axis. Now, the one we did in our example today was the shifting left and right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add I'm going to add, uh, let's say 5, just so I can drive the point. So here is uh, my new function. And all of us think it's going to go to the right, but actually when you add, it's going to go to the left and it shifts five units to the left. Okay. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to change it. Of course, it's still working. I'm going to go ahead and change it. Instead of plus five, I'm going to write minus five. And you're going to see what's going to happen. So it shifts to the right. Okay. Now, the last two, uh, some people struggle with it. Uh, it says, what happens if a number, the coefficient that's in front, um, is somehow, let's say you have a 3x squared. How is, how is that going to affect the parabola? So we're going to go ahead and investigate. What's going to happen if I put a 3 uh, inside or next as a coefficient? So you're going to see what's going to happen. So you notice that if it's greater than 1, it's a stretch. Now, what happens if I decide, you know what, I'm not going to put 3. I'm going to type in a 0 0.5, which is equivalent to 1 half. And let's see what happens to the graph. So they call that a vertical compression. The other one's a vertical stretch. This one's a vertical compression. Okay. And then the horizontal, uh, I will continue to give you examples, but today we're going to just going to focus on, uh, well, let's go ahead and try 
what happens if uh, we have if we have a number that's inside like that just like that okay so let's let's see what happens so what it's what 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 it says in our diagram it says that if the number is greater than 5 it should compress and it's a horizontal compression so let's see what happens so it's a horizontal compression yeah that you can see that there uh, what happens if if I just put a decimal let's say I I, I go I go ahead and I type in a 0.5 which is equivalent to one half uh, what it's saying here is that it should stretch horizontally okay so there you go so that it is a stretch so I just wanted to briefly tell you the different um, transformations not necessarily memorizing them just trying to understand what's actually happening okay uh, we're gonna do these together in class we have y equals x squared and we're going to compare it to y equals 2 times x plus 2 to the second power minus 5. Uh, go ahead and take a minute to pause and to think about what's happening. Okay. Uh, I do know that the minus 5 is going to shift the graph down. I know the 2 is going to be what we say a vertical stretch. But what's going to happen with this 2? It's going to shift it to the right. So we're going to go ahead and see that. So we're going to go ahead and type it in. So we have 2 times x plus 2 squared. Oh, well, let me, I got to close the parentheses. Okay, let me delete that. And then you have a plus three. So we're going to see the, the transformation right in front of us. So there's the parent function. And of course, it goes to the left. Oh, it, it went up. So let's see what happened. Uh, that's right. I put a plus. Oh, I got both of them mixed up. <laughs> so let me fix this. It's a minus five. And we noticed that it should have gone down and, and it was a mistake on my part. So as we can see it, it actually goes down. Okay.